We have found out that for the coexistence of two phases, we must have the Gibbs free energy per molecule on the two sides of the phase equilibrium curve to be the same. So G1 equals to G2 defines the phase equilibrium curve. That is the curve of values, uh, pairs of pressure and temperature for which we have the same Gibbs free energy uh, per molecule. So if you look at, at point A where we have a temperature uh, T and pressure uh, P, the Gibbs free energy per molecule for phase 1, G1, must be equal to G2. And at point B where I have a slightly higher temperature T plus DT and slightly higher pressure P plus DP, I should have the same uh, relationship between G1 and G2. So infinitesimal changes in G1 and G2 must be the same along the phase equilibrium curve. So let's say that on the phase equilibrium curve, we have uh, at point A, G1, Gibbs free energy per molecule for phase 1 at temperature T pressure P is equal to G2 Gibbs free energy per molecule in phase 2 at temperature T and pressure P are the same. So this is at point A. And then at point B where I have a slightly higher temperature T plus DT, P plus DP, I have the same values for the Gibbs free energy per molecule in phase 1 and phase 2. So this is basically telling me that DG1 is equal to DG2 on this curve. So uh, this is basically DGI is the change in the Gibbs free energy per molecule in the ith phase. It is a GI at T plus DT, P plus DP minus GI for the ith phase, Gibbs free energy per molecule at temperature T and pressure P. So here I have uh, the Gibbs free energy per molecule for the ith phase equal to the total Gibbs free energy of the ith phase divided by number of molecules in the ith phase. And this is uh, the mean energy of the ith phase minus temperature, uh, reservoir temperature times entropy of the ith phase plus reservoir pressure volume occupied by the ith phase divided by number of molecules in the ith phase. We can write this as mean energy per molecule minus the temperature times entropy per molecule plus the pressure times volume per molecule. So uh, basically I have defined per molecule quantities in order to make all the parameters intensive. And so I have the mean energy per molecule is the total mean energy divided by the number of molecules. The entropy per molecule is, by definition, total entropy of the ith phase divided by number of molecules. And the volume per molecule is total volume V divided by number of uh, molecules in the ith phase. So if you write the change in the Gibbs free energy, uh, so if I write change in the Gibbs free energy per molecule of the ith phase, you can see that uh, I'm going to use uh, this equation and uh, that will give me um, the first term will be the change in the mean energy per molecule, the epsilon i bar, minus temperature dSi minus SI dt plus p dvi plus vi dp. So 
all the uh, terms in the uh, differential form. But I have uh, for entropy change ds using the fundamental relation of thermodynamics is the heat added at constant temperature d bar q over t so uh, basically i see that tds is equal to d bar q which is from the first law of thermodynamics tds is equal to d e bar minus d bar w the amount of work done uh, by the system, not on the system. So that is minus T bar W. So I find that if I divide this by the number of molecules for the ith phase, so if I do this for the ith phase, uh, this will be uh, for the ith phase, it, I can write this as uh, TDSI is equal to d epsilon i bar minus d bar w which is plus pressure d uh, dv and if i divide this by the number of molecules uh, 1 over ni factor of 1 over ni i see that tdsi is equal to d epsilon i bar plus p dv i so uh, i can go back to my equation for dgi and substitute for uh, this tdsi here uh, so i can see that so let me copy that equation here dgi is equal to d epsilon i bar minus t d s i uh, minus s i d t uh, plus p d v i plus v i d p and for t d s i i'm going to substitute d epsilon i bar minus t d s i is uh, d epsilon i bar and then minus p d v i that is for TDSI and then I have minus SIDT plus PDVI plus VIDP. So you can see that I have the cancellation of uh, D epsilon bar and then I have the cancellation of PDVI terms. So basically I find that the change in the Gibbs free energy per molecule is minus the entropy per molecule dt plus the volume per molecule dp. So writing uh, the dg1 is equal to dg2. So going back to this equation, dg1 is equal to dg2. I can write this as um, minus dg1 is equal to dg2 is minus s1 dt plus v1 dp is equal to minus s2 dt plus v2 dp so if i take the entropy to the left hand side i see s2 minus s1 dt and if i take the volume to the right hand side it's v2 minus v1 dp so this equation is basically uh, saying the derivative of pressure with respect to temperature dp dt which is the slope of the phase equilibrium curve is the change in the entropy uh, per molecule delta s divided by the change in volume uh, per molecule delta v so um, This equation that we have obtained uh, along the phase equilibrium curve is called the clausius clapeyron equation. It relates the slope of the phase equilibrium curve to the change in uh, entropy and volume uh, in going from one phase to another. 
And uh, if I basically uh, talk about uh, a capital N number of molecules for these two phases, uh, you could write this dpdt as uh, s2 minus s1 over v2 minus v1. If I multiply it by capital N for capital N molecules, uh, I would have the total change in entropy delta S divided by delta V for N molecules of the two phases. Uh, so basically I can rewrite this as dP dt is equal to change in entropy divided by the change in uh, volume. Now uh, for the change in entropy between the two phases, S2 minus S1, uh, it's basically the amount of heat added uh, in going from phase 1 to phase 2 divided by temperature. This is using the uh, fundamental relation of thermodynamics. Um, and basically I find that this is uh, L12 divided by T, where L12 is the is called the latent heat of transformation phase uh, transformation so this is the heat added not to change the uh, temperature of the object but it's the amount of heat added to break or make bonds so that we have a phase change uh, in this process. So uh, by substituting for entropy change a uh, latent heat uh, of transformation divided by temperature we can write clausius clapeyron equation as dp dt the slope of the phase equilibrium curve to be the latent heat divided by T delta V and uh, this equation Uh, depending on how we are defining the volume or uh, and latent heat uh, may have a, a different meaning. So if V is a volume per mole, it's the volume occupied by one mole of this substance, then L12 is uh, the latent heat per mole. If V is volume per gram, then L12 will be is uh, per gram also. So basically, uh, we have looked at the uh, phase equilibrium curve. That's the uh, range. Pairs of values of pressure and temperature on, uh, such that the Gibbs free energy per molecule of phase 1 and phase 2 are the same. So along this curve, because G1 is equal to uh, G2, uh, this automatically implies DG1 must be equal to DG2. So basically what this means is we're going from temperature T to T plus DT, pressure P to P plus DP, going from... Uh, point A to point B on this curve and the Gibbs free energy per molecule uh, can be written as mean free uh, mean energy per molecule minus temperature times entropy per molecule plus pressure times volume per molecule for the ith phase and when we write the differential uh, infinitesimal changes in the Gibbs free energy per molecule we have d epsilon bar minus TDS minus SDT plus PDV plus VDP. And by using the fundamental relation in, of thermodynamics, DS is equal to d bar Q over T, we realize that TDS is d epsilon I bar plus PDVI. And by substituting this into the um, infinitesimal change in the G, uh, we find that uh, having dg1 equals dg2 along this phase equilibrium curve implies 
minus s1 dt plus v1 dp equals minus s2 dt plus v2 dp, which can be written as derivative of pressure with respect to temperature is equal to change in entropy per molecule divided by change in volume per molecule. And if you have these quantities uh, for capital N molecules, it's the change in entropy and change in volume uh, for N molecules. And the change in entropy is a latent heat of phase transformation divided by temperature. It's the amount of heat needed to uh, break or make bonds in the phase change process. Uh, so dp dt is latent heat of transformation divided by temperature times change in volume and if this is uh, defined per gram uh, then latent heat is per gram if the volume is per mole then the latent will, heat will be given per mole of the substance.